Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert following the Bud Light controversy. Bud Light is in a panic. They don't really know what to do. It's really, really obvious. They've had a sales drop of 26% so far. We know it's going to be much worse when the rest of the numbers actually come in. They're giving away free beer to the beer distributors. They're paying direct financial payments to bartenders, waitresses, waiters, bar owners, sales reps, everyone, because the business has completely fallen apart. And now they need to deal with Donald Trump coming around and saying, hey, money does talk, reminding Anheuser-Busch they need to get serious about supporting their customers. Let's get into this article. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate you guys. From Mediaite, former President Donald Trump has been notably quiet in the brouhaha involving Bud Light, with many conservative activists calling for a boycott of the brand over its partnership with trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney. On Sunday, Trump finally weighed in, albeit briefly. In a post to his Truth Social platform, Trump endorsed a new book which encourages conservatives to, quote, defund leftist woke companies, which we know is actually working. And as part of his comment, Trump referenced Bud Light's parent company, Anheuser-Busch, quote, it's time to beat the radical left at their own game, Trump wrote. Money does talk. Anheuser-Busch now understands that. According to figures compiled by Bump Williams Consulting, Bud Light's U.S. sales were down 21% for the week ending April 22nd, and then another 5%, totaling 26%. And this is for packaged goods. This doesn't even include all the drops at bars and restaurants. The brand is completely falling apart, and this is the actual post from Truth Social, and this is the book President Trump was referencing, The Great Patriot Bicot Book by Wayne Allen Root, who's a good friend of Donald Trump's and also multimillionaire. He has his own radio show, interesting guy. But what makes this such a difficult and terrible situation for Bud Light and its parent company is, this is not anything like a traditional boycott. Yeah, I see it in my comments because I've done several videos on Bud Light now. People are not gonna buy this product again. They are sick of the associations that they created. Usually there's a boycott of something and it's a one-time thing with one product, and it's not really related to other products. But the problem is, we've seen so much of this woke agenda stuff being pushed on kids in school, being pushed in the media, now being pushed more and more aggressively in advertising and in products. People have just had it. It's gotten so bad that Sesame Street has drag queens in it. Now, nothing against drag queens, I guess. I, I just, I don't know why they need to be in Sesame Street. Sesame Street is for everybody. And the drag queen thing is new and controversial. So why would you do that? And this is not a joke post. Here's the actual video. And you'd say, okay, you know, they're having some fun. I know Gonzo was into chickens and stuff and Kermit was a frog and he was dating a pig, Miss Piggy, but this is a little bit odd to see in Sesame Street. And then as you're watching more of this video, you're thinking to yourself, all right, does it get any weirder? Well, it, it's, it's weird for the drag queen, yes. Elmo is now in drag, and Cookie Monster is in drag. Does Cookie Monster really need to be in drag? Does he have to endorse the lifestyle to, you know, very, very young children? I guess I, they think it's necessary. This is why people are not going to buy Bud Light, and this is why people are taking protests and boycotts to a whole new level. No one's going to get violent over Elmo in drag, but they're certainly not going to spend money on a product that supports things like this. And parents aren't going to trust their children with their products and with their content. And this is why we see such a big pushback on Disney. Now, this is a sophisticated guy who does not like the boycotts of Bud Light. And he's explaining here, actually, why the Bud Light boycott represents a new phase in anti-brand protests. The boycott has turned into more than just a protest. It's turned into a promotional event for anti-woke brands. Now, we've seen this in comic books in Comicsgate, where Comicsgate actually said, okay, yeah, we don't like the changes that you've been making in comics. And then Comicsgate people went ahead and started to make their own comics. At the same time, they were speaking negatively about the mainstream comic book companies ruining and destroying and changing and doing weird allyship things with established characters and brands, the Marvel characters, the DC characters. I was part of Comicsgate. I still am. At first, the flare-up over the Bud Light-sponsored Instagram post from transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney seemed likely to be short-lived. The post was basically a one-off aimed specifically at Mulvaney's social media following and outrage over supposedly woke corporate behavior, which it was, tends to flicker out by the next news cycle. 
So the fact that the kerfuffle ended up slogging on for a couple of weeks is worth unpacking. It exemplifies what anti-brand protests have become and suggests that brands need to update their outrage response playbooks. The Bud Light response to consumers hating Bud Light has been just off the charts ridiculous. Really, really poorly done. They still haven't made clear communications about it. And this isn't the first time that Bud Light had this problem. They decided in 2016 they were going to push Amy Schumer and Seth Rogen to talk about equal pay and equality and all sorts of social agenda stuff. These ads did not do well with consumers and Bud Light had to pull the ads. After they pulled these ads, they explained, hey, this hurt our sales. So we had to pull these things. And then they said, instead of these kinds of ads, we're going to focus on marketing to Lady Gaga music and the NFL sports. Similarly, after this recent blow up, Anheuser-Busch has said, listen, we're going to change our marketing focus for Bud Light from pushing the woke agenda to sports and music, as opposed to music and sports. The same thing, they've been through all of this before, and when they get caught doing what they were doing, they run back to sports and music to promote their brand, which probably is where they should stay and not get stuck in this unwinnable cycle. The traditional core of the brand protest is, of course, the boycott, with the focus strictly on the brand, publicize its alleged shortcoming, apply marketplace pressure, force change. Think of labor activists drawing attention to Nike factories back in the 1990s, for example. The more recent practice of shaming companies for advertising in certain venues similarly zeroes in on the brand in question. But the Bud Light imbroglio demonstrates how a brand protest can morph into something that's less of a critique of a brand and more about serving as a promotional event for its critics. In this case, that included not only a pile-on of politicians and pundits, and random celebrities, but someone launching a new ultra-right beer, which was successful, and someone else promoting an app that warns you if you're buying a woke brand, which sounds like a great app to have. Bud Light practically becomes a bystander as all the erstwhile protesters jockey for attention. The whole episode shows how a brand protest is no longer about focusing negative attention on a specific target to a specific purpose. It's about jumping on the bandwagon to push your own agenda. Fascinating because that is what things have become. People aren't interested in seeing change at Bud Light. We don't want Anheuser-Busch to be more sensitive to what we think the brand should be. We just want them to die as a brand. Just goodbye. Just stop selling your brand. No one wants to buy it. No one wants to try to save them and bail them out. They're not needed anymore. There are all kinds of other beer you can buy. In comic books, there's other comics you can buy. In movies, you can go see movies from other companies. That's why Disney's animation unit is doing absolutely terribly compared to Universal. Three years in a row, Universal is doing better than Disney in animation. It's absurd. Politicians arguably led the way. The Mulvaney Bud Light video essentially served as a jumping off point for a different advertising campaign, one in which conservatives use Bud Light as a foil for their own demonstrations of their right-wing bona fides. In the political sphere, latching onto brands and corporate behavior as an excuse to push an anti-LGBTQ agenda has become routine. Well, it's not about an anti-this or an anti-that. The woke agenda is to push a whole new lifestyle on everyone, whether they like it or not. Every age, every child, every gender, you're all supposed to submit, and that's what they want. So yes, people are gonna push back against that. They're not interested in stuff like this. They don't think it's necessary for Elmo to be in drag on Sesame Street. They don't see how that adds to their children's lives, and that doesn't make them comfortable trusting the Sesame Street brand. According to Axios, the most shared articles on the subject came from right-wing sources like The Blaze and Daily Wire. But there was little, if any, articulation of any proposed plan or set of demands for changing Anheuser-Busch's future corporate behavior. Most of the discourse was just signaling. Yes. The discourse is this, you should panic Bud Light. You're, you killed your brand. No one wants to trust or support you. They don't want change. They don't care if you focus on sports and music. They're just happy to see you lose money. And they're happy to also hopefully see Sesame Street lose money for promoting things that they don't want their kids to be exposed to. It's supposed to be for kids. And obviously it's up to the parents to decide what's appropriate for their children. Not these people who use terms like allyship. Also from Fast Company, Bud Light poured decades of LGBTQ allyship down the drain, and now everyone's mad. Yes, everyone is mad at Bud Light because you can't 
Put something where it doesn't belong. You can't pretend that it's appropriate to push agendas on products like this. People put up with it to a certain degree because they figure, hey, who cares? But the more and more and more that they do, the more the backlash is going to build. This is a publicity publication campaign. Originally, when I saw this, I saw all the buzzwords and I was like, okay, this must be an LGBTQ site or whatever it is. Let me check it out. Let me see what they're about. It's not an LGBTQ promotional site. This website is just about focusing on creative excellence across the communications industry, which is PR, marketing, advertising, while putting creativity firmly in a business context. So it's the commercialization of excellence in creativity and communications. Got it. But it reads like it's an advocacy site. How Bud Light's abandonment of the trans community could influence pride with a capital P. In light of the ongoing controversy between Bud Light and trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney, brands must decide whether to move forward with pride plans or succumb to the vocal minority. Vocal minority, it's, it's all of their customers. Their entire market for their customers are people that like promotional girls in white t-shirts that say Bud Light on them. That's why I always have pictures like this on my thumbnail. That's the market. Doesn't mean if you're not interested in that, you can't buy the product. You can buy the product, you're on the fringes. It's not the vocal minority, it is the customer base. But this is a mainstream marketing publication trying to educate people on what's going on in industry. And obviously, they're not telling the truth. This very public step backwards for queer inclusion comes just one month before June, during which many brands align themselves with queer talent for Pride Month. But with the outsized backlash against Bud Light for a relatively small partnership, brands that are planning more large-scale and visible alignments may worry about being targeted with similar vitriol. Well, you know who your market is. And it, the amazing thing is there's this pretending going on there's a lot of pretending going on, even more pretending going on saying, well, look, this is the future. It's, it's just necessary to support this pride. They're marginalized communities. Like, all right, well, are they the main market or are they a marginalized community that's a minority market? It can't be both. It's got to be one or the other. And really, I, I don't see why they can't produce what we would always do in marketing is produce niche products for niche markets. Of course, the main market for Bud Light is interested in a promotional model like this one on my screen. They are. You wanna do other promotional models for other niche markets? Go for it. But they really have to stop pretending that the minority is the majority and they can just ignore the majority that's paying all the bills. Let me know what you think of this in the comments below. Do you think Trump is right that money talks? And are you part of this plan that you're not going to support Bud Light? You're not looking for them to make any changes. You're just looking for the brand to stop being on your shelves and you're going to ignore it if you see it. That's how most of us feel. Did you realize that mainstream marketing is this insane that they just keep talking about things like allyship? This is, it's not the main, it's not the market. You can't just talk about allyship and put pictures of transgender people on your products and that's marketing. That's not marketing. Marketing is figuring out who can benefit from what it is that you have and then communicating that to them in an honest way. Not all of this weird stuff about promoting for specialty communities that are really not the main market. And if it is the main market, then there wouldn't have been a backlash, right? Because they would have just loved what you were doing and you could have sold your product. I really appreciate your comments. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.